Kiss up, you beautiful benches. I'm Mr. J. He's Brian. And welcome back to another episode of the Channel Chasers podcast. Now, go ahead and sit back, buckle up, and enjoy this episode. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Yeah, that's right. I stole the intro. It's cool. I just, I've always wanted to do that. I have always wanted to do that. So I figured, why not do it and use a little good place appropriate, you know, curse replacements uh so again what is up you guys of course like i said before in the intro i am jay from mr jay's reviews joining me as always is my co-host my good friend of my self-proclaimed sidekick brian kersey how you doing tonight brian hello people i'm okay i'm sad but i'm okay i didn't know your last name was defranco yeah you know i've always wanted to do that <laughs> seriously though phil Seriously, if you're looking for more interns, just hit me up, man. I've all like I've been practicing that intro for a few years now. Like that that's one I've just been keeping in the pocket. And I felt like this was the appropriate time. Um But yeah, so we are here to talk about another end of a show, man. And this is a show that I absolutely love. Uh it's actually something that we covered in the very, very proto days of Channel Chasers. Like, uh, I believe it was episode two? It was like two or three. It was definitely before before episode ten of our original, original incarnation of yes. Channel Chasers. So, I, we, remember, we, I remember because I made the thumbnail, and the thumbnail was the first time that Eleanor said to from Michael. Yep. So, uh, of course, uh, as alluded to by the, this, you know, little intro here, we are talking about uh, The Good Place, the hit NBC comedy starring Kristen Bell uh, of Veronica Mars and Frozen fame. So, man, uh, yeah, like we said, like, this show, we go way back with it, all the way back to its pilot. We reviewed it for a segment we used to do on Channel Chasers back when it was a video podcast um, called Pilot Season, which didn't do all that well at first, so we decided to scrap it in favor of our, like, more tr- more like traditional current format of just, like, seasonal discussions. The thing that you guys know us for, because surprisingly enough, talking about three to four, four different single episodes is a lot more complicated than talking about a whole season of one show. Yeah, because, like, you know, you jump around, um, and, like, the a seasonal discussion is a lot more, like, focused. So, mm-hmm. this is the final season of The Good Place. Um, it's, it's funny, because, uh, you know, this is one we've been planning for a while now, because, you know, even though, like, you know, this isn't a show that Brian covers, this is one that, you know, I watch... I watched it live all the way through and, um, you know, Brian regularly caught up like whenever like it dropped on Netflix and then like, you know, with this final season, he caught up pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, like... the thing with me in The Good Place is it's one of those shows where I will, I love it and I will binge it and then I will, other things will get in the way and then I'll binge it to catch up and rinse and repeat. So I do semi of it yep uh and this was the final season and like this like finale was so important that like we had to miss a pretty huge me and my girlfriend had to miss a pretty huge uh episode of legacies in order to catch this finale and you know while we regretted the um uh, missing the episode on time. Man, uh, did we need time to recover. I honestly, I feel bad for Brian because I didn't give Brian all that much time to recover because I'm like, all right, Brian, you know the drill. Chop, chop. Let's do it. Let's go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, because I literally just finished watching it. But I will be okay. Uh I was going to say something else. Uh, 
Uh, you're better than me, man. I was not okay after that. I was I was a freaking mess. Uh dude, I was like I was crying all over the place. Um but And this this show though, I will say in the con- in the current like like woke culture of of uh, the generation that we are in right now, you wouldn't think a show about what happens after you die, the afterlife, which kind of messes with peop- certain people's religions and all that. So that show would be such a success, but that's how good this show is. Well, it's not even necessarily mostly about the afterlife. It's honestly just a big story about morality and what makes us human so like i feel like that's why it works so well it doesn't even have anything to do with religion it's just a what makes us human what makes us good people but the legit plot is people's adventures after they die oh yeah i know but i'm I'm just talking about overall themes like that that's that's why i think it doesn't like ruffle as many feathers as it probably might have right because it doesn't necessarily yeah. like directly address any religion particularly or criticize any religion um, they even say in the first episode pretty much everybody got a piece of it uh, but only this one yeah. guy that was super high on shrooms got it completely correct one time, uh, Doug something. Yep. Stanton, I believe. Yep. Or, no, that's the office. So, yeah. Um, let's talk about the good place. Man, there is so much to even say. I, I think let's start about, like, what we love about just the show in general. Probably the biggest thing for me is just these characters, man. This is the most lovable bunch of idiots I have ever met in my entire life. Mm Mm-hmm. Like if you if you know if you know me, um through YouTube, the old podcast, or this new podcast, you probably catch it on that. One thing about me is I love the weird. Like for some reason I always gravitate towards weird things and all these characters are weird in their own unique, beautiful way. Yep. Uh, so let's go, let's go through each and every one of these characters uh, just kind of real quick. Obviously, we can't take the whole time because our recording software has a limit of two hours. But uh, So first, let's start off with Kristen Bell herself, Eleanor Shellstrup, uh, the epitome of white trash. Uh, I love Eleanor. She's hilarious. Um, she, mm-hmm. she is a shit person that like just goes through this huge journey of discovering that, you know, just because you, you know, are a shit person in life doesn't mean you don't have that voice in your head that can guide you to be a better person. This is kind of what, um, and, you know, Brian was talking about this before, the whole, like, the whole culture of, like, wokeness and cancel culture and shit. This is the, the one thing that, you know, cancel culture refuses to let you believe. People can change and get better just because they were shitty before. Um, and Eleanor is the perfect example of that. Like, she, like, she stole, lied, cheated, you know, she just was not a good person at all. But... You know, through the help of Chidi, Jason, Zahani, and Michael, and of course Janet, uh, she, she ended up becoming not only better, but honestly, the best one of the group and the de facto leader of the Soul Squad. Yeah, she, in terms of the universe of the show, like, headed up the whole changing and saving humanity. Mm -hmm. And she was the one who always had a plan. Even when the others were scared shitless and they did not know what to do, Eleanor was the one to calm down, think things thoroughly, and be like, alright guys, 
I got a plan. We still have a now, chance. Granted, now, granted, her plans didn't always work, but... They always found a way. Like Jeff Goldblum says, life finds a way. And not all of her plans were huge hits, but... Or made any sense, but at least she had one. Yeah, no, she she always tried. Um, and that was the cool thing, right? Um, and what I love about the good place is it's not it's not ever what you expect it to be. You know, when we fir- when we first watched the pilot, we were like, okay, so this is the whole this is her whole goal, right? She's supposed to you know prove that she's a good person so that she can both turn out to belong in the good place. And then we get the season one finale with that iconic laugh from mm-hmm. Ted Danson, and we find out that they've been in the bad place the whole time. Oh my god. That twist was amazing. Which, by the way, mm-hmm. I know we're 11 minutes in, but uh, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it, but we are covering the final season, so I would assume that uh, you know you would be aware that we're talking spoilers for everything before the last season. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the, the iconic laugh happens. We find out they're in the bad place, and now they have to figure out uh, first how to get to the good place and how to get better and then eventually, well, well, first they have to figure it out again that they're in the bad place because mm-hmm, they keep getting reset. But then eventually, like Michael warms up to them, and then they decide to work together to get to the good place. And then they find out that just the afterlife in general is completely fucked because um, you know the whole the whole system basically just sends everybody to the bad place. So basically. Uh, like, the final season is all about fixing the afterlife and trying to, like, figure out, like, what is a fair system to allow people to have the proper chance to, you know, get to the good place. And eventually, what they settle on kind of embodies the ideal of the show, right? They settle on a test that, you know, you can be perpetually stuck in and some people might fail but you'll always have a chance you'll always have a chance to get better and better and better until eventually maybe you're stuck and you just stay in the middle place or you go to the or you just fail too much and you go to the bad place but there is still that chance where after enough times you can make it to the good place because you know you've learned over the course of your lives to get better Indeed. And that's like a really, really great message. So we talked about Eleanor. Let's talk about our man, Chidi Ariana Grande, Chidi Anagonye. Uh, love this guy. Uh, man, Chidi, Chidi is great. Chidi reminds me a lot of Brian. <laughs> Chidi reminds me so much of Brian. So one, one of my, one of like our our friend groups running jokes with Brian, especially when we first started, um, pl- um you know, including him in like our uh, role playing game stuff, uh, was that Brian's favorite words were I don't know, I don't know, so much to the point where my best friend Jordan, who uh, like runs the group. He's like, Brian, I swear to God, if you say the words, I don't know, one more goddamn time, I'm just going to kill you. I'm just going to kill your character. I'm just going to kill him. And to be fair, like Chidi, I grew. Eventually. And and that's the cool thing about Chidi, right? Chidi, he starts off as just this little bitch. Like, no sugarcoating it. He starts off as a little bitch. <laughs> and eventually, he realizes, like, he realizes, you know, what's worth fighting for uh, and the importance of decision. And he and we actually, like, get to, uh, deep down into the root of his indecision. And eventually, he gets over that, becomes confident, Chidi, and then helps to save all of existence, which is, like, just amazing. Like, Eleanor headed everything for saving humanity and the afterlife. Mm-hmm. But Chidi was the one who came up with the big idea. Yeah, he was the big idea guy, which is great. And uh, this leads us into a conversation that I definitely want to talk about. Chelinor. Chelinor is one of my favorite TV couples of uh, all time. 
just in general. Oh my god, man. They are so fucking cute. Just goddamn. They are like the epitome of opposites attract. I know! That's what makes it so awesome! It's just so cool because, like, Eleanor is just so cool and nonchalant, and Chidi is just this big ass nerd. It's it's great. It's just absolutely great. I mean, this dude is such a nerd that in his, like, perfect afterlife, after he gets reset for the umpteenth time, is to have not only a library with every book that he could ever want in it, yeah, his, yeah, but, but have also have the power to call any book that he wants on demand, like freaking Mjolnir. Also, also, basically, the design of his house is just a library with a toilet. Mm-hmm. And uh, like he even admitted that when he thought about it, he was. Oh my god, my house is just a library with a toilet. He's just like, yeah, no, that's what it is. And he's like, and I loved it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's Chidi. He's pretty fucking great. Um, and 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 I love that they like break stereotypes with him, like like the fact that um uh, they address that the actor, it, even though they try to hide it, sometimes the actor is surprisingly buff. And they'll have, like, moments where he'll take off his shirt and they'll be like, damn. Uh, even Maya Rudolph's Ma- character Maya, is, like, yeah. upset. Ma- Maya, Rudolph's char- Maya Rudolph's character, the judge, has the biggest freaking crush on Chidi. It is crazy. We'll talk about that uh, when we get to the, and I, the side and also, characters. I love, I love that, they, that they address the fact that he was ripped. And they gave a reasonable explanation yeah. that actually fits the character. Yeah, because he was super paranoid about, like, being unhealthy, so he, like, obsessively worked out. Yep, and now he just keeps the ripped body. Yep. Uh, and and also, um, he can also, he can also be clumsy at times. Yep. Like, like, I love it in the final season where he's got that book, Power. And he calls one of the books and then forgets that he called one of them. So it's next book side that. Yeah, that's pretty hilarious. Um, and Chidi also, I mean, so does, El- I mean, the same goes for Eleanor, but Chidi has some of the most fun relationships between characters um, out of all the cast. Mm-hmm. My favorite being his relationship with Jason. Like, that, oh, that yeah. is my favorite, probably. Uh, like bromance on the good place because like Jason and we'll talk and this segues into I guess talking about him but like Jason is a straight up like 100,000 uh, percent Florida man idiot. Oh, not only that, but it it hits hard because of the city that he's from. Yeah, he's from Jacksonville, which you know, uh, not not giving away Brian's total location, but not too far from where Brian is. No. Yeah, so that's pretty. That's pretty hilarious. And like the the greatest part is that like Jason gives so much stupid. Sage wisdom to Chidi. It is great. Like, one of his final ones was like, oh man, I'm having problems with my girl. And so Chidi gives him this great speech and it's all dramatic. And then he's like, ah, he goes, ah he goes, yeah. He goes, ha, I tricked you into tell. I tricked you into telling me things about Janet when really you were telling yourself things about Eleanor and what you should do about Eleanor. You're welcome. And he's like, wow, that surprisingly made a lot of sense. <laughs> Jason is great. I love Jason and his obsession with Blake Bortles and then up later on Nick Foles. Uh and like his like which is blind devotion to the Jacksonville Jags. Which for those that don't fall sports ball. They wrote real life into the show. Oh yeah, no, Blake oh, no, I know those are actually yeah, those are actual players. Yeah, that. Well, not only that they're actual players, but when Blake Bor- Bortles left, yeah, they replaced them. Yeah, they, they replaced them with. They Nick wrote Balls. him. Yep. 
in this show. That was great. I, I love that they included that because, yeah, Bortles got traded, like, in between seasons. Um, and they uh, obviously, you know, like the joke goes, they got Nick Foles. So, you know, Jason goes from Bortles to Foles. And he gets super hyped because he's like, whoa, Nick Foles is even better, <laughs> which is true. Foles has a much better record than Bortles. Um, which I love that, though, because he's like, Evil Janet was so bad. She she told me that Blake Bortles left the Jaguars. And he goes, and Janet goes, uh, sweetie, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, he did actually leave. He goes, no, Bortles! And, but he goes, but they did get Nick Foles. Whoa, Foles! It's great. It's great. I love and, Jason. And then she was like, Oh, but now he's broke his ankle. Oh, that's Jackson Joe Luck. Um, but yeah, no, I fucking love Jason. Jason is just phenomenal. Like, he is the perfect comic relief character. He never gets annoying. And, and like, 80%, 80 to 10 of his jokes land. Like,. There aren't that many Jason yeah. misses, like, in my opinion, when it comes to, like, his delivery. And Indeed. It's just... and, and it's, um, it's funny because, um, I don't, I haven't Googled this myself, so I don't know for sure. Mm-hmm. But I heard somewhere that, um, the actor who plays Jason. Yep. Manny Jacinto. Is a Mensa. Is he? Is like genius is he i believe so huh like he's a legit genius yet he's playing this i mean i feel like you'd have to be really smart to play someone that profoundly stupid like that i mean there have been multiple cases in history where geniuses are playing idiots i mean the guy who played i believe it was i believe it was skull he's a fucking doctor or is it bulk one of those guys um it was skull yeah it was skull i was right okay he's a fucking doctor so yeah like i said this area like you were talking about there are plenty of cases of that so yeah that's jason he's amazing and of course like he has a relationship with janet you know his girl not a girl uh, oh, he has a he has a bachelor degree in applied sciences. Oh, nice! In civil engineering. That's very typical Asian, but yeah, good for you, man. <laughs> but yeah, uh, like his uh, relationship with Janet is phenomenal uh, because again, this just shows. Like Janet's character development, you know, all the different times she got reset and she developed and learned more of people and humanity. Uh, it was pretty great. And, you know, her developing feelings for Jason and then becoming like just super instrumental in like helping with saving existence and all of that and, you know, fixing which, the afterlife. Which is funny though, because, uh, Jason actually pulled off a moment that technically saved everybody. And that was the fact that Janet had been replaced and Jason was the one who recognized that she was a Yeah, phony. because she didn't say not a girl when he said when he called her girl. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh lo- Which I honestly did not see that coming. I love that. Jason always comes in super clutch. You never underestimate Jason because like he's the one everybody just looks over because he's fucking dumb, but he's awesome. I absolutely love him. And I still to this day love that reveal about Jason because we think that he's a monk at the beginning. A monk who doesn't talk. Yep. And then he shows up, he goes, Ayo, so uh I hear this is about people that, you know, don't think they belong here. Uh, I don't really belong here either, yo. Uh, can I, can I, uh, can I, like, take this class? Can I take this class too? Oh, and can I copy off your homework? Because I ain't break a pencil or anything. And, and do you think that, okay, he's somewhat out there, but then Eleanor finds his secret room. Remember that? Yep. She's like, whoa, what the hell is going on here? He's like, 
oh yeah, I've slowly been getting Janet to get me these things secretly. Yep. <laughs> he's got he's he's got all these like dirt bikes and like porn related stuff, and it, it's just really funny. Jason's great. Jason's great. Um. All right, so now let's talk about like probably one of my other favorite. There, I'm honest. There isn't. I don't have a one favorite character of this show, but like, let's talk about another character from the Soul Squad, Tahani Al Jamil. Oh my goodness, Tahani. Um, she is this just absolutely gorgeous, tall socialite with like just the ability to name drop every single person in the world um, and is connected to everyone yep. apparently every single person in the world she can name drop any celebrity you could like think just imagine even to the fact that we find out that somehow they never explained it but her godfather is big ben the clock yep. Also, one of the one of her god uh, godparents is Bono. Um, like she 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 does that a lot. It's pretty great. Um, and also, there's, there's just this fun back and forth between her and Eleanor because Eleanor clearly has a crush on Sahani, um, and uh, it's it's just really fun. They never really do anything with it. Although there is one reset where Sahani and Eleanor are paired together as soulmates that we don't ever get to see, but. You know, oh, damn. We, we get a little glimpse of it. Um, but yeah, which we do, which we do find out though that kind of Tahani sort of feels a little similar. Oh yeah, to I, that was dude. That was one of my favorite moments when, like, to, uh, like in the finale, Tahani gives this whole speech about how she idolized Eleanor and how Eleanor, like, means so much to her. And, like, Eleanor is the reason why she wants to move up in the good place and, you know, work as an architect and stuff. And then she ends it with, like, a, you've got a rockin' bod. She goes, wait a minute, did you just turn the tables on me? Nice one, hot stuff. She's like, I have nothing else to teach you. Yep. Oh, my God, it was so good. I love their friendship. Like, Tahani and Eleanor are, like, it's, like, the epitome of female friendship. Like, they get each other. Like, like, they don't always get along, but they understand each other, and it's great. You know, and at first, they have this, like, antagonistic relationship because Eleanor assumes because Tahani is this, like, super famous, super beautiful socialite, and she has nothing in common with, like, a Florida trash or not Florida trash, Arizona trash, white girl like Eleanor. Um, but turns out they are uh, they actually do have a lot of similar issues, most of them stemming from their shitty parents. Um, Indeed. Um, the, uh, actually, the only people that don't have shitty parents um, like out of the Soul Squad are Chidi and Jason. I mean, like I, gu- I guess well, you could say Jason's parents are shitty, but also they're kind of a direct product of their environment, just like Jason. So, well, um, we don't really know too much about Jason's mom because she died mm-hmm. when he was young. Mm-hmm. But his his dad is uh, Big Dave. No, no, Don, Don, Donkey Don, Doug, man, Donkey Doug, Donkey Doug, Donkey Doug, Donkey Doug, and Donkey Doug is not that great. <laughs> No, Donkey Dog. Donkey Dog is a. He's a like. Look, he's not the greatest person, but he is a good dad. He tries, but also to be that's fair, that's more than Tahani's parents. Low, I was gonna say low that's income Jack. Low income Jacksonville had him when he was eighteen. Yeah, and also like that's way more than you could say about Tahani's parents. At least, like, at least. Donkey Doug spends time with his kids and shows affection to his kids. Did Jason have siblings? Yeah, Pillboy. That's his brother. Oh. I thought that was no, that's his brother. Like, like the other sense. No, brother. no, that's his brother, brother. Oh. They, they, both, they both call Donkey Doug just Donkey Doug because he doesn't want to be called dad because that makes him feel old. Yeah, no, that's his actual brother, brother. Wow. Yeah. But 
But yeah, just one other thing that um, we didn't mention about Jason is the fact that he can take things like that and just manage to take some god awful situations and add some levity to and it. And also, he just he knows how to break the tension in the best ways. Most like when he was talking about how his mom died. And he's like, she died from the big C. That's what... No, not cancer. The big... That's just what we called the giant gator in town. And then when everyone's nervous, he's like, nah. Just kidding. It was cancer. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But also, he has the funniest ways of breaking the tension. And most of which... Most of those ways involve throwing a Molotov cocktail that he has out of nowhere. I love that though, cause, cause like Michael gives him back all of his memories, and he's like Molotov cocktail, and he's like, I was afraid that was the only thing that you'd remember. <laughs> it was great. That was great. Okay, so we already touched. We already talked about Janet for the most part. Let's talk about like the di- which Janet was one of my favorites, though. Honestly, seeing her grow, hundred uh, percent. Um, and her like. Letting people, I don't know how to say this without it sounding like a double on inside her. Yeah, let's go ahead and say yeah. it inside her. Yeah, and then the way that she created Derek. Derek is hilarious too. Uh, uh, Derek is a real funny creation. I love his rivalry with Jason. It's like that's my that's my that's my mommy girlfriend. Not a girl. <laughs> oh man, so good. So good. And also, we get to meet all the different Janets, my favorite of which being Disco Janet. Same. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. And just because of the the actress's acting and all that, I do like her portrayal of neutral Janet. Yeah, neutral Janet is pretty funny. Bad Janet, like, yo, so is it, so is it just me? Like, I always thought this. Janet reminded me a lot of Flo from Progressive, and like, if you if you ever saw those other yeah. if you ever saw those other Progressive commercials where you see Flo's sister who is blonde, she's essentially just bad Janet. Mm-hmm. Um, which is but bad Janet. <laughs> Never have I seen a character made make me laugh so much at just fart jokes. Right. Because normally I find them kind of stupid, but it's just how, it, it, it's <laughs> how she delivers them. Darcy Carton is a master of comedic delivery. Yes, she is indeed. Uh, she's just great. Um, which kind of transitions us into just talking about the side characters in general. This show has such amazing side characters. From Vicky, one of the bad place employees, who is just all about like running the show and being an actor. Um, and then eventually a director, which is... Oh, I love her fucking arc. It's so good. Uh, mm-hmm. She's great. Uh, love her. Um, my, one of my only complaints is that, like, Sean changed... Uh, Sean, the main antagonist that we have to deal with for the most part, he kind of changed sides a little too quickly. Like, he was just like, all right, I guess you're right. I'll do this. I get you, but also in the same vein... He begrudgingly did it and will never admit that he lied. No, I it. I get that, but also I feel like they could have. I mean, if they if they wanted if they had wanted to like extend the season a little bit, they could have like given more time to like Sean's transition into that begrudging agreement. It was kind, of, but like I, but for the sake of brevity, which I understand, they were like, okay, I'll do it. I'm not gonna like it, but I'll do it. Yeah. Um. I will admit, though, that if they, like, had to go on for, like, another season mm-hmm. or so, I could see him as, like, a free agent not working for Heaven or Hell, just trying to be mischievous. Yeah. Also, um, my favorite my favorite side character of all the side characters is the Doorman. I love the Doorman. He's hilarious. I love his obsession with frogs. <laughs> yeah, which... Uh... Somehow this show keeps getting brought up, but Glee, man. Yep. You know he's from Glee, right? Oh, shit. 
I didn't even realize that. That's crazy. But yeah, he's hilarious. Love him. Yep. And I love that the 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 like climax of him and his like obsession with frogs is the fact that just as he's starting to get like super tired of people bringing him stuff, someone frogs, brings him an actual frog. Michael brings him an actual real frog. And I love that though. He's like, I know the perfect name for him. Mr. Jumpy Pants. Oh man, it's it's so good. I, I, I love all these side characters. It's so great. Like it just makes the world so much richer and so much more fun. And and you know what the thing is? We can also talk about this because it's kind of in the same vein as the mm-hmm. side characters. The guest stars yeah. who play yeah, side pretty characters. Pretty huge. Even in the final season. Like, like um, we said before, Maya Rudolph is in it as the judge, who I love her the, probably the most. She's my probably my favorite side character besides the doorman, mostly because of her like constant TV references, because all the judge does in her free time is watch TV. And like that is the most relatable and, thing I've ever seen. And the like epitome of that joke. Yeah, Timothy Olyphant comes through and saves the day. Like actual Timothy Olyphant. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> Cause like... And I love it though, because they're doing these like giant philosophical things and he's stopping them every once in a while. So it's like, so what does this mean? And it's like, whose side are you yep. on? Uh, I love it. I'm just trying to get the truth. I'm young just. Lady. I'm so. I'm so glad he was there. I'm so glad he was there. I. I. I, I yeah. was. I was very. Very sad that Santa Clarita died. Got canceled. Um. And then also we same. And also you talk about uh, guest star side characters. Lisa freaking Kudrow. Right? As the like as the philosopher chick. Uh, what was her uh like uh. Patty, Patty, is her, Patty, Patty was what, what the nickname was. I couldn't think of the full name, uh, but Patty was what her like nickname was. That was awesome. Good to see you, Phoebs. Yeah, and I love that Chidi was just fangirling over her, and she's like, "Nope, this nope." Uh, so I've I've been in this place for too long. My brain's a little mush. I can't. Um, are you a are you a book learned person? Yeah, we're all screwed. Uh, uh, and then and then she takes them for milkshakes, and he's like, "So what did you mean that we're screwed?" It's like, damn it! Forgot it. It's like, ah, <laughs> oh, this milkshake. I just keep forgetting. It's just so damn good. And then and then in the middle of explaining it. She's like, so what about this? And she forgets again. She's like, damn it! Throws the milkshake. <laughs> oh man, it's. And then I love it though, cause uh, they all walk away, and she's like, "What is this math on my shirt? Is this an S or is it math?" <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. It's great. Um. Okay, so. Uh, the the final side character I want to address, who's not even really a side character, he's definitely more of a main character. Ted Danson himself, the main man, Michael. Um, his arc is so great. He starts off as a demon torture specialist architect working for the bad place for this, you know, new form of torture. Um, and then eventually he grows to love humanity so much to the point where the people of the good place see how much he loves it, and, like, you know, uh, they invite him up, and they basically say, fuck this shit, we're out, and give the keys to Michael, and dip. And so Michael is in charge of the entire good place. But then, once everything runs smoothly to the point where they don't need the committee anymore, Michael's like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Um, And then Eleanor, you know, I love this. This was just perfect. Um, she kept thinking, she's like, okay, everybody else got to the point where they got to walk through the door and, like, you know, go back into the universe. Uh, but there's still something missing for me. At first, she's thinking, oh, it's Mindy, you know, it's Mindy. Because 
Which, by the way, we didn't talk about Mindy, but Mindy's, yeah, Mindy's awesome. great. She she helped facilitate Chelinor, so she will always be MVP in my book. Um, Mindy Sinclair is basically, you know, the worst case scenario version of Eleanor, as she puts it. And so she does her best to try and get Mindy into the program and try to get her to take the test so that she could be better. And so, but she's like, I don't want any just nobody. Messing with my yep. wife. And luckily, Tahani, because of her, like, you know, going into the good place, like, rising up the ranks, uh, like, as an intern, working her way up to architectum, she eventually gets promoted to architect, and she's in charge of her test. And she earns her bow tie. Which was, oh my god, that was such a sweet moment. When Michael's like, every architect needs a bow tie. I was like, oh man. So good. And I, and I do like it, though, when Michael does first bring her on he's like you mind if when you become a big star i say that i knew you back then yep that was so good um but yeah um, so she helps mindy um thanks to tahani um but after that she's like no there's still something off i don't know what to do and so and then as she's trying to walk as she's about to walk through the door michael tries to walk through the door and it's just not working. And he keeps trying and trying and trying. He goes. He like shuffles yep. through. Yep. And then finally he's like, Eleanor, you walk in and I'll take it back on you. Yep. And he's just like, I have nothing else to do now. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And then so Eleanor realizes this is her last thing. This is her last gift. She has to help the person who helped guided her through this whole journey. So she lets Michael, the, this person who has grown to love humanity more than anyone else in the higher ups of, like, you know, the cosmos, she helps him become human, which is just the perfect full circle thing for him. And mm-hmm. like, I love Janet because, like, Janet sees Michael as kind of a father figure. And so before, before Michael goes, she gives him all these warnings like you know, don't uh, you know? Don't buy the insurance on the rental car. It's a scam. Uh, 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 all these other things. Make sure you you watch your salt intake. You have to worry about your blood pressure. You have blood now. Um, it's so it's so good, <laughs> and then I love it because Michael's just like, don't worry, Janet. It's not going to be that much long. It's not going to be that long for you. I'll see you when I get back. Oh my gosh, <laughs> man. And then when he gets when he gets to Earth, first thing he's like is like, man, it's hot. But it's a dry but heat. It's a dry. I love. And then he actually like gets a smile on. Also, his face. something like, that was really cool, um, you know, one of his like ongoing things as he was bored in the afterlife was he was trying to learn to play guitar, right? Well, that comes back when he's a human and he learns to play guitar, and his guitar teacher. Is none other than Ted Danson's actual IRL wife. Nice. So that was cool. I was surprised we didn't see that uh, Dax, but whatever, you know. Um, at least we got Ted Danson's wife. We did was get Dax. Dax? He wasn't in the no, finale. No, I mean the finale. No, but he was there when they went to hell. I mean, I, I remember that. I was talking about in, like the finale specifically. I don't know because I don't know if his character would make any sense because he was yeah, a demon. True. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I I thought that was cool. And of course, like after Eleanor like went through the door, part of her essence uh, kind of got reincarnated into the world and like tapped that guy on the shoulder, which you know uh, gave Michael his mail. So, you know, one last push to help Michael out. Which I thought was awesome. That was such a good way to end the series. And even though it gets... Even though it gets spoiled by the trailers... Uh, that is the perfect last line to the show. I forget what the last line is. Keep it yep. sleazy. But but yeah, Michael just all throughout the story, he like starts out as you think a side character, mm-hmm. but then he grows into a main character and 
really grows as yeah, a character. Yeah, like he grows to learn and to learn from his learn from the Soul Squad and become part of it and just and one of the things that I loved about him the most though, like as far as mm-hmm. stories go, was when they were trying to reset and relearn on Earth and he decided to cheat the system by giving them a yep. little push. Which, by the way, I really geeked out when he came to help Eleanor because he appears as a bartender. Yep. Yeah. Which, for those that might not know... Oh, uh, that was, yeah, that was such a great callback. I, I, I thought he was gonna make that joke. Like, you know, isn't this great? Isn't this great? You know, we're at a bar where everybody knows your name. Oh, um, but yeah, no, it was it was great. Michael had one of the best arcs. I mean, everybody had a great arc, but I think Michael's is definitely kind of the top of the food chain, right behind Eleanor's. Yeah, and I do like how Jason. Jason was not only the first one to come to the realization that he needed to to move on. They let him have one last Jason ism, where he still yeah the- <laughs> he, he just waited in the forest for like a bit of uh, like what is it like thousand? I think they said it was like actually a thousand. Or yeah, he, he was, it was a thousand Baramies, which we don't know what the quant- we don't know how long a Baramie yeah. is, um, but. But yeah, it was a thousand Baramies. He stood in the and real quietly until like his Janet showed up, so that he could give her the necklace, so that she'd always remember him. I was just like, oh, <laughs> that's just, so... and I love it because yeah. like you know uh, he goes in, like he goes right after Cheedy does, and it's just like, hey, yo, Cheedy, wait up! <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I love it though because he said that he waited a thousand. Years in total silence and just pondered. And she's like, universe. like a monk. He goes, huh? Oh, never mind. He's like, yep. They had a really good romance. Michael too. and Jason. Oh hell yeah! Because Michael was one of the like always one of, like you know Chidi never like outright wanted to because like Chidi was a nice guy, but Michael always just like discounted Jason and brushed him off. And he was always the one that was the most surprised. Like, oh my god, Jason, that actually makes sense. Yeah, but <laughs> I love it though because the cherry on top is that Michael names his dog yep. Jason. <laughs> but, but yeah, also I was talking about uh, Jason and Janet. Uh, I mean, it's not a bromance, it's a romance, but yeah. Uh... Oh, I, I thought you said romance. romance. Yeah, no, there's yeah we talked about it. Their romance was great. Um, their whole marriage and everything, yeah. loved it. Uh, I I love mm-hmm. that like Jason's dream house when they live in the good places, essentially like a bootleg Ho- Hooters slash Buffalo Wild Wings Jacksonville version. Which I don't know if that actually exists. Oh, uh, which is, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, man, there's just so much good stuff about the good place. Um, you know, honestly, there's a lot more we could talk about, but, you know, I just, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to condense, like, a show that's gone on for four seasons. And, like, we never talked about it, but Eleanor's mom is a cool character who actually goes through her own arc, yeah, because she kind of abandoned Eleanor. Um, like, Tahani's sister goes through a really good arc. Like I said, uh, you know, Jason's dad and his brother Pillboy um, go through a, a fun arc as well. Um, maybe not as profound, but definitely like, you know. Uh, well, they changed their lives. Yeah. He, he changed their lives. Cause... Yeah, he turned Pillboy from a drug dealer to a pharmacist, which is just, you know, a legal drug dealer. Yep. I mean, because really, that's all, that's all a and pharmacist yet... really is, is a legal drug dealer. And he got Pillboy to actually, like, do his job and not, like, steal from elderly yeah, steal people. steal the pain medication from the elderly. Oh, man. So good. Um, and, and it's just, like, in that last season, all the, like, 
friends and family members started reappearing. Yep, and uh, cool. you know, I lo- love this. I like, I love the the little arc with Simone. I thought that was pretty solid as well. Um, I love that actress. Um, uh, who, funny enough, then, she showed um, up in the last season of, or, or not the last season, but the current season of Veronica Mars as well, which was on at the same time as The Good Place for a bit. Which was oh, funny. Nice. Yeah, she played oh. Nicole in the um. In, in the recent season of Veronica Mars. Yeah, also the arc, the semi arc, which is one of those arcs where you can tell it's still going on, but hopefully we'll have a oh, happy with Brent? ending. Yeah, where he's yeah. learning to not be a misogynistic douche. Where he's like, I shouldn't tell a woman that she looks prettier if she smiles. What if it's true? Oh, man. That that guy is such a dick, and um, he plays it so well. He does. Well. He I always mean, plays a dickhead, I mean, though. Like that's his like. I mean, do you remember that he was on How yep. I Met Your Mother? And in that show, he played a guy who we thought went from being a dick to a nice guy, but then ultimately made a dick move yep. at the end. Well, yeah, man, the good place is just just great. I'm gonna miss it. It's one of the it's one of the best comedies I've seen in a long time. It makes you laugh, it makes you cry, and it really makes you think about some really deep stuff. Indeed, and also it has like a tinge of genre without being too genre y. Yeah, like it's supernatural, but not in the traditional supernatural sense, like say a legacies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really dig that because it, it it makes it more accessible to like the casual audience. I, I'm gonna miss that because we don't really have too many of those where it's like it's supernatural, but it's not heavy supernatural. Like if if a show yeah. is supernatural, they tend to go all in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the, yeah, it's it's gonna be one of those ones that goes down as one of the greats, and I'm glad I covered the final season. Um, I'm glad we got to you know just talk about it in general on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, it, indeed, and it will be missed. It's its own unique thing, and it got me real sad. Not just because of that, but because it seems like everything. Yeah, ended. man. We literally just talked about like the end of Arrow in the last episode. Now we're talking about the end of The Good Place. Uh, freaking, uh, you know, just in general internet news, the like Dragon Ball Z bridge is over. And it's just like so much stuff that we love from the past decade is just ending now. And it's just sad. But, you know, such is life, such is time. You know, you grow, you move on. That's something the good place has taught us. Mm Mm-hmm. It's all part of life. All good things must end. Yeah, because, like, that's one of the biggest things that they learned, right? Like, if they got, if they were just perpetually stuck in the good place, that's when they're, like, how their brains turn to mush. Because one of the best, one of the best things about life and what makes the fullest is because they know there's a specific end point. Right? Because when you die, it's over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's what they had to realize. And I think, you know, that's the lesson we should all take away from the good place. Is that, you know, we don't know how much time we have left. So, like, do what you can with it. Do what you want with it. And have as much fun as you can. Like, really, really Mm -hmm. good stuff. Really good message. And it's just a fantastic show that, you know, again... Like Brian said, will be missed. It kind of is the end of an era, too, because it helps reboot the whole NBC Thursday night comedy. Oh, yeah, and now NBC is just killing the comedy game right now. They got Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Superstore, and a bunch of other stuff. Just, oh, man, NBC is killing it. Uh, Mm -hmm. But yeah, any closing thoughts on The Good Place before we uh, get into plugs? Wow, we went almost under, we went under an hour. That's, yay, good for us. We kept time. This show was so forking good. 
And we never really got to talk about it, but I do like their whole way of getting around the network by coming up with their own system yeah, for cursing. shirt, you know, uh, Ash, Ash. Uh, uh, Bench, uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so good. Mm-hmm. So It makes me think of that, like, infamous, infamous vine. Mother trucker, dude. That hurt like a butt cheek on a stick. <laughs> Watch your profanity. Uh, it also reminds me of that one... Uh, was it Trident? It was one of the gum commercials. Like, who are you calling a cootie queen? You lint liquor. <laughs> you remember that one? You know, I know you know that one. You know that one. You got a dirty mouth? Clean it with Trident. <laughs> but yeah, it's just... It's weird, though, because also, like Arrow, this was very sad, but left you with, like, a calm. Yeah, and it was appropriate. They ended, like, they had their ending in mind, and it didn't feel like it was a forced ending. This felt like a natural place to end the story. Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, no I, 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 I know again. the bullshit allergy. It's a, it's a pretty strong one. It always comes around when we talk about series finales. <laughs> pretty little liars. <clears throat> Same. I agree. But I guess on. That note. Yeah, it is plug time. That special time of the night where we get to tell you guys what is coming up on our channels. For myself, it is, of course, Vlair, uh, which is linked in the description. Riot is also now putting content out on Vlair as well, which, I, you know, um, I'll have uh, Elizabeth add uh, his Vlair to the description also. But his main thing is his YouTube, which is always in the description. Well, speaking of Vlair... First of all, coming up, I would have had it before now, but my body was just like in crash mode for most of the day, and then I had to catch up on these last few episodes. Uh, But after we're done doing this, I'm going to finish up editing and then releasing on Blair my review of Sonic the Hedgehog. Nice. Moving around at the speed of sound. Yep. Though I do gotta admit, the new theme song is, is that the one good with too. like uh, Travis Scott and yeah, that's the with Liz Khalifa. And with yeah, that, Khalifa. yeah, that shit slaps. Yeah, you see. Yeah, and that, little that slaps. You sent me the link to that. That was pretty dope. And I run. That shit's pretty dope. And uh, the music video is really creative too. Yep. Yep, but uh, it, it's you'll have to watch my whole review for it. But it's good family and, fun. And also, um, if I if I had a soundboard, I'd be hitting the round of applause button, guys, because Brian is doing a movie without a podcast. <laughs> this, this is a constant thing I joke Brian about and constantly tease him because, like, I told him I was like, dude, with everything I'm doing, I just cannot do two podcasts it that's just way too freaking much um and he's just like come on man this is the only way i get to see movies and i'm like dude see a movie by see a movie on your own you can do it i believe in you and i uh, well he also gave me a way to he's like that's something you could do Mm -hmm. for blair and that's what i'm doing but but yeah for normal stuff going to my youtube on Sundays, I cover Doctor Who, which this is the Frankenstein episode, which I'm excited for. Uh, I have caught up. I just haven't Indeed. done. I just haven't done videos on it, uh, but I have caught up. Uh, just for anybody who's curious. Indeed, and it's um, it's looks like it's going to be the calm before the storm because these last are going to be huge. Just judging by episode title. 
Well, also, they keep amping it up, and the reason why I thought they were only having eight seasons was because they were like, two more episodes till, one more episode till, and they weren't talking about till the end. They were talking about till the big climactic Mm -hmm. end. But then Mondays, Black Lightning were in the home stretch, only a couple of episodes left. And, oh my god, it's it's really good. I don't want to say too much because Jay hasn't seen it yet. But um, Wayne Brady is awesome and awesomely evil, surprisingly. And we could be getting a certain comic book super team tied to Black Lightning and his daughters very soon. I'm trying but to look. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, and it's not, it's not, it's not who I think it is because they, 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 they constantly tease, they, they constantly tease that. There's no way they're gonna do who I think it is. They're close. It seems. Now, is this a male character? Because if it's a male character, if it. No, I said super team. Oh, team. Oh, the outsiders. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I thought if I because no, 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 but they did. They have brought in a young guy who can work elements, and a young guy who knows tech. So, um, we're getting pseudo him. But anyway, uh, then on Tuesdays it's Legends of Tomorrow. Wednesdays, it's Katie Keene on my flare. I missed out last week. Sorry. Um, tech and life got in the way. Um, then Thursdays, it's... Wait, no. Thurs- Wednesday. Katie Keene is on Thursday. Yeah, yeah, ca- Wednesday- There's no Nancy. No Nancy until the 26th. Yeah, so, so yeah... Skip Wednesday. Wednesday is an off day. Uh, but yeah, Katie King on Blair on Thursday. Then on YouTube on Thursday, Legacies. Then on Friday is the season finale of what Harley is Quinn. What's gonna be goddamn insane? Have you, dude, real quick, have you seen the episode? I just want to know. Have you seen the episode? Seen it and Oh my god. It. <laughs> The ending, and nope. <laughs> my my reaction to that ending. Oh, is it's big. not. Nope. It's not real. But that ending. <laughs> yep. But anyway, and then lastly is uh, it wasn't on this week, but yeah, Owl House. Um. So for me, um, real quick, just to let you know uh, what I have, what I've put out this week. Uh, I did put out a review for Valentine's. To all the boys, P.S. I love you. The sequel to I love, you, which I really enjoyed. It was a good date night movie to watch. Um, you know, the day before Valentine's Day, uh, we enjoyed it a lot more than we liked the first one. Um, I, but you know, I have a I have a man crush on Jordan Fisher, so that might have to do with it. Um, but uh, it was good. Um, it's up. I I uh, put a review for that up there. Uh, I and also speaking of stuff that we're going to do on Channel Chasers to transition into that, uh, I did a review of High Fidelity season one, which we will be covering next week on Channel Chasers um, as a like a Valentine's Day special type thing. Um, and other stuff I did, uh, of course, uh, Sundays. Uh, I know I've been I've skipped I've missed like two episodes. Sundays have been really busy for me. Um, but I promise, especially because it's a historical adventure and it has to do with Frankenstein, I'm definitely doing Doctor Who this week. Um, and, of course, I got Batwoman um, and uh, Supergirl will probably be up on Monday. Oh. Um, are they coming back this week? Yeah, it's this week. Then I'll probably try to cover both in some aspect. Uh, yeah, the- I yeah, they, yeah, they that. come back on the sixteenth. So yeah, it's it's this week. Uh, so yeah, Batwoman. Uh, yeah, bad. I'm doing Doctor Who and Batwoman. Um, 
Uh, we'll definitely be doing uh, Supergirl on Monday, and probably also along on Monday as well. Zoe's extraordinary playlist, because um, that show is just too good for me not to cover. Uh, it's just so interesting and weird, and Jane Levy and musicals. Look, Lauren Graham. Lauren Graham. You got Lauren like Gilmore is like a like a tech boss. Like, got to do it. Got to do it. I don't care if I'm tired. I don't need sleep. I would if I I would cover it if I didn't have a job that requires me to get up early. Yeah, in the morning. I, like I said, I don't need sleep. You need sleep. I don't need sleep. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna do Zoe's on Monday though because I'm not gonna overload myself on Sundays. Um, and I don't do much on Monday besides the Good Doctor at ten. So also the Good Doctor. Uh, which is getting pretty intense. Uh, something, something is not looking too good for a certain character that I love. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but that's Monday. Uh, Tuesday is, of course, Flash and Legends. I know Legends episode last week was great, um, and so was Flash's episode, but I had a really bad headache that Tuesday, so I did not review after watching. Uh, but Brian can confirm that I did watch the episodes because we talked during the episodes. Indeed. Um, and then Wednesday, um, nada, because Nancy Drew's not on. Fuck you, Riverdale. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but also not sorry. Like, you guys, come on. You shit the bed. You shit the bed. Uh, Riverdale? Riverdale? Oh, obviously. They, um... What the hell? That ending. Yeah. It's like, no. Nope. Yeah, yeah, we're not even going to. And not in the good way of Harley. Where like... Yeah, we, we're not going to talk about it. We're not even going to give it the time to talk about it. Um, so that's Wednesday. Thursday, uh, we got Legacies. We got A Million Little Things. Um, oh, yeah. Tuesday is also This Is Us is back. Uh, doing This Is Us also um, at some point. Uh, Thursday, we got Legacies. We got What's the other Thursday show? Thursday, yeah, Katie, Katie yeah, Keen Katie and, and Legacies. Legacies. Yeah, I always forget Katie Keen for some reason. Yeah, Katie Keen and Legacies. Um, and then you know, uh, Fridays, Owl House as usual. But also, uh, something else is coming back. The return of Star Wars: The Clone Wars, the final final season, is coming back to Disney Plus. Super excited. We're getting a bad batch arc, baby. No more unfinished automatics. An actual full-on episode. I'm so excited. I have been waiting for this. This is my favorite aspect of the Star Wars franchise. I am, man, I haven't been hyped. I haven't been this hyped for a Disney Plus release since The Mandalorian. So excited. Uh, but doing that, and of course the Owl House, um... There, there's a show that came out that I did not know about that Brian just turned me on to uh, called Utopia Falls. I'm gonna see if I can. Yep. Uh, I, I'm gonna see if I have time to watch that, but that might be a weekend release for me because uh, I definitely want to check it out. It's it's yeah, all know, out, but no, but like a weekend release as in my review. Okay, and that that might be a weekend release for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, and if I really like it, I'm definitely going to cover it and show it some love. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited. And I know I promised Lock and Key and that just never happened. And it's not because the show is bad. It's just because like I watched it and then I realized I had other stuff that I needed to do. Um, so I just haven't gotten around to watching it. Um, but I'll, I'll get to it at some point, I promise. But like, you know, it, it won't be like any time in the near future, but I'll get to it. Um, but yeah, um, look forward to the High Fidelity episode next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. We get to talk about Zoe Kravitz and music. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of conversations spawn from this one. Um, especially like given like our different like end of the spectrum with relationship experience. So, um, it's going to be definitely an interesting podcast. Hopefully you guys, uh, stay tuned for that one. Thank you to everybody who listened. Uh, thank you to everybody who like uh, you know listens to us on iTunes, Spotify, all those other places. Thank you to the YouTube audience that listens to us 
on the YouTube version on uh, the JNB's podcast Omniverse. Uh, you guys have stuck with us, and uh, we appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, uh, we apologize for the Sabrina one um, not going up, but if you want to listen to that one, it is in the audio version is um, you know available to you for you to listen if you want to check that out. But you know, we promise to hopefully get that out to you in a more timely fashion. Uh, but until next time, we'll catch you guys next week. Peace, benches. Stay sleepy. <laughs>